Hey, Shalom family. Most high Christ blessed. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Galilee to my right. I was Zariah. All praise to the Most High. So today we're going to go over one of the main scriptures that mainstream Christianity tries to use to justify not having to keep God's commandments. And that's Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness' sake. Hmm. Let's see what that really means. Is Paul saying that because Christ died, you don't have to keep the commandments? Or that Christ did away with God's laws? Is that what Paul is trying to say? We're going to see today. Let's start off there. Romans chapter 10. Let's read verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. But Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. You see that? It says, so see, you read that, you say, see, look at that, brother. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that believeth. All you got to do, believe. And you don't have to keep them laws no more, my brother. Hmm. Let's go, let's go throughout the book of Romans and let's see if Paul was on drugs or if he was a schizophrenic or if he had split personality. Because I could have sworn that in many scriptures in the Bible or in Romans, Paul says contrary wise to us not having to keep the law. So let's start in the book of Romans chapter 1. Hmm. Let's start in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Let's read verse 25. The book of Romans, chapter 1, and verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie mm. and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever? Amen. So wait a minute. He's talking about idolatry. He said, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. Go ahead. For this cause. So since the Israelites chose to serve the creature more than God, read. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. So wait a minute. He said even the women did change their natural use against uh, into that which is against nature, meaning the women became homosexual. Hmm. Go ahead. And likewise also the men. Wait a minute. And also the men, read. Leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one towards another. Read. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. Keep reading. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. So they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't like to think upon God and his commandments. Read. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate mind, that's a mind void of judgment. They don't believe they'll be judged by the evil things that they're doing. But let's keep reading because it may be getting into some commandments. He might get into some commandments here in a minute or some sins. Read. To do those things which are not convenient. Because it's not convenient for a man to be with a man and a woman to be with a woman. You can't produce or reproduce and have children. Read. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is Paul talking about unrighteousness? Why is he saying homosexuality is unrighteousness? Wait a minute. He's calling homosexuality sin. So if that's sin, can you be a homosexual? So he, he could have been saying in Romans chapter 10 that Christ is the end of the law, meaning you don't have to keep the laws anymore. What law was he talking about? We're going to get into that. Keep reading, though. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Read. Fornication. Wait a minute. Fornication, that's sin. That's breaking God's law. That's breaking the law of marriage. Now, why would Paul be bringing that up if we didn't have to do that? If Christ was the end of the law for righteousness. Hmm. Go ahead. Wickedness. Hmm. Covetousness. Wow, that's, a, that's Ten Commandments. Read. Maliciousness. Go ahead. Full of envy. Murder. Ten Commandments. Debate. Deceit. Deceit, that's lying. Ten Commandments. Malignity. Well, hating your brother. Read. Whisperers. Backbiters. Haters of God. Dang. Despiteful. Proud. Boasters. Inventors of evil things disobedient to parents. Wait a minute. He just listed at least like seven of the Ten Commandments. Disobedient to parents, that's not honoring your father and the mother. Now, why would he be saying that if Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake? Hmm, we must be tricked. There must be something about Romans 10 verse 4 that we don't understand. Because in the very first chapter of Romans, he's calling them out for sins, saying that these things are unseemly. Go ahead. Without understanding. Covenant breakers, mm. without natural affection, Read. implacable, uh -huh. unmerciful, Read. who knowing the judgment of God. They know God will judge you for this. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Wait. Why are they worthy of death? 
Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake, according to what Christians teach, which we know he is the end of the law for righteousness sake. But not these laws we're reading right now. You still got to keep these laws because if you do these things, you're worthy of death. Read. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now skip over to Romans chapter 2, verse 13. I'm just, we just getting warmed up. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Wait a minute. If Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake, the way you explain it in the Christian church, the way your pastors explain it in the Christian church, then why is Paul writing in Romans chapter 2, just eight chapters before, that you're justified by doing the law? I'm confused. Wait a minute. Either your pastor is a liar or Paul was on whatever kind of drugs they was doing back then. Paul must be schizophrenic. Paul must be crazy because it seems as if he's telling us that we must keep God's laws. Skip over to chapter 3, verse 31. Let's see. Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Notice we went to chapter 1, <laughs> chapter 2. Now we're in chapter 3. Hmm. Go ahead. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Hold up. Now why in the world would he tell us we don't make void the law through faith? Just because we have faith in Christ, we don't make void or void out God's laws. We must establish God's laws. That's a complete contradiction to what your pastor has been teaching you. That's in the first three chapters. Now let's go to chapter 6, verse 1. Oh, it continues. It keeps going. Read. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Read. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue breaking God's commandments? That grace may abound? That Christ grace that he gave us through his death may abound. Just let grace take over and we don't have to do anything. Read. God forbid. Hold up. What the Bible say? God forbid. That means no. We just read it in Romans chapter 3. Shall we make void the law through faith or through grace? God forbid. What are you reading? You're running to Romans 10 verse 4 to justify you not having to keep God's laws. Now realizing that Paul told you you had to keep God's laws throughout the book of Romans. Give me that real quick in Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. Wait a minute. God's laws are holy. This will make you holy. Read. And the commandment holy. And God's commandments are holy. Read. And just and good. Wait a minute. God's laws make you holy and just and good just by you keeping them. Watch this. Keep reading. Was that then which is good? No, skip down to verse uh, 14 now. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the laws of God are also spiritual. Not only is the law good, it's spiritual. Not only do we have to keep it, I mean, I don't, not, only, not only do we have to believe on Christ, we also have to keep the laws, the laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, we know that the law of animal sacrifice is what Christ took away and nailed to the cross. But right now, we're still in this time, we must keep God's commandments. We still got to love our neighbor as still. We still can't be homosexual. We still can't hate our brother. We still can't murder. We still can't steal. You still can't break the Sabbath day. You still got to keep God's laws. Now, go to Romans 10, verse 4. And that's just a few scriptures in Romans. There's various more. You can go to Romans 13, where it tells you how to love your neighbor as yourself. You can go to Romans chapter 8, where it says that the carnal mind is, is enmity against God because it's not subject to the law of God, I mean, we could just go even further. But for sake of time, Romans 10, verse 4. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Come on. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes it. So it said Christ is the end of the law of unto, uh, the end of the law for righteousness unto everyone that believeth. What law? What law did Christ do away that would make us righteous? Hmm. Let's see. Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Let's read verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 through 4. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, mm -hmm. can never with those sacrifices, sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually, 
Make the commas thereunto unto perfect. So the law of animal sacrifice was a shadow of Christ to come. This is why when you read in Galatians, the third chapter, it says the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. We know thou shalt not kill wasn't a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ because Christ himself told us not to steal, not to kill, not to commit adultery, not to hate our brother. So we understand that these things were not a shadow of Christ to come in the sense of what the scripture is speaking about in, in Hebrews chapter 10. This talking about sacrifice. Christ would be the redemption. His blood would redeem us, not the blood of bulls and goats. Watch this. We're going to keep reading, though. Keep reading. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because if sacrifices could have made you perfect, we'd have never stopped offering them. Read. Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Read. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Watch this. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. A blood of a bull and a goat couldn't take away your sins and give you eternal life. That had to come through the death of the Savior, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. That's all Paul is saying, that you could only get eternal life through faith in Christ, no longer through animal sacrifice, because the scribes and Pharisees were using that to justify them in their wickedness. That's why Christ said this. Give me Matthew chapter 23, verse 2. We'll come right back to Hebrews. This is why Christ said this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 2. The book of Matthew chapter 23 and verse 2. Come on. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Uh-huh. All therefore whatsoever they bid you, observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. But don't do after their works. For they say and do not. Because they say and do not. They were teaching God's laws. Christ said, hey, if they teach you the law, keep it. But. Don't do it after their actions because they're hypocrites. They're breaking my, they're breaking God's laws behind closed doors. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Let's read verse 5 now. So he said, the blood of bulls and goats could never take away your sin. That's why Christ had to be the end of the law of animal sacrifice for righteousness because they were using that. They were going about to establish their own righteousness through animal sacrifice. Watch this. Keep reading. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said... Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Go ahead. But a body hast thou prepared me. But a body hast thou prepared me. God prepared a body for Christ so he can die for the nation of Israel once and for all. No more sacrifices on the Day of Atonement. Once a year, the, my, the, the high priest going into the holiest of holies to sacrifice for the nation of Israel. No. Christ sacrificed for the nation of Israel once and for all. Come on. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou hast had no pleasure. Read. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Read. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin thou wouldest not. Read. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. That's the law that you read about in Romans chapter 10, verse 4, that Christ is the end of for righteousness sake. Because under the law, you had offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin. We don't no longer offer animals for our sin. Now we justify through the blood of Christ if we repent. Under the law of animal sacrifice, you died for adultery. You died for homosexuality. You died for murder. You died for breaking the Sabbath. Under Christ, if you do any of those things or have done any of those things, there is a chance at repentance if you repent. If you want to repent, go back to the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 4 again. Let's close it out. Romans, chapter 10, and verse 4. The book of Romans, chapter 10, and verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Go ahead. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. If you, if you are under the law of animal sacrifice, you had to do every single ordinance. You had to make every single sacrifice, every single burnt offering, every single drink offering and meat offering on the Sabbath, on the new moon, on the feast days. You had to do that. There had to be a continual burnt offering all day. You had to accomplish all those things. If you did not accomplish those things, you were put to death. That's why when you go to Hebrews 9, verse 10, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10, if you was in this, if you was under that covenant, you had to do everything that came with that covenant. Go ahead. 
the book Hebrews of Hebrews 9 verse 10. Chapter 9 and verse 10. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. You hear that? These things were imposed on the children of Israel until the time of reformation. Which meaning what? The time of the Son of God to come and die for the nation of Israel. Now, go back to Hebrews 10. I mean, excuse me, Romans 10 and verse 4 one more time. Romans chapter 10 and verse 4. Go ahead. But Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. It said Christ is the end of the law through righteousness for everyone that believes. Give me Romans 3 and verse 22 and 23. Start at 21. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 3 and verse 21. But now. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Read. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Because Christ was talked about or spoken about in the law and in the prophets. You read about him in Deuteronomy 18. You read about him in Isaiah 53. You read about him throughout all the scriptures. Psalms 22. Various different scriptures throughout the law and the prophets. You read about Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ. What is the righteousness of God? By faith of Jesus Christ. By faith in his blood and not the blood of bulls and of goats. Go ahead. Unto all and upon all them that believe. You hear that? Read. For there is no difference. You see that? You see that right there? And, and it says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Christ came to do away with animal sacrifice so that we could be presented righteous to God by keeping of the commandments and the faith in Jesus Christ. That's what Romans chapter 10 verse 4 is speaking of. So with that, that's 15 minutes with the captains. I hope you got some edification from that. Romans chapter 10 verse 4, well, what does it say? Uh, the law for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake. Don't let a Christian hymn you up with that. That's only speaking about Christ taking away the law of animal sacrifice so that you and I can have a chance at eternal life through the faith of Jesus Christ. And with that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.